welcome back everybody to RimWorld, where today we are going to, hopefully by the end of it, have this ship, our first Arcotech ship, up in space, doing a kill. Uh, preferably maybe testing it against some trade ships to make sure that we've got the right heat balance and that type of thing. Now, in between episodes, I wanted to get some shipbuilding done, which I didn't want to do too much of, because of course we're on Arcotech level now, so all this stuff is relatively new. However, there was one thing that we have done before that I wanted to redo... And I think some of you might be able to guess what that is. Towards the top of the ship, I threatened it yesterday, but I have placed a very mighty, very powerful, very brand new spinal laser capacitor. We have ourselves a big old spinal barrel dominator. Now, it's nowhere near the laser that we had on the last ship, obviously. It's probably about a third, quarter, fifth of the size. Probably about a fifth of the size. Um, oh, I don't know. No, probably about a quarter of the size of the original one. Um... But this one, of course, has the Spinal Barrel Dominator instead. Now, the description says that it, 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 it uses plasma. Um, several superheated plasma bolts into one large sphere. So I assume that it will have the longer range than the laser and match the range of the regular plasma weapons. But everything else I want to keep in because, of course, we have to do a little bit of experimentation with the heat cores and such things. I kind of spoiled it a little bit there, but I was told that there was an update that went live just before I start recording, actually. And one of them, and I can see it now on the top row, right there, Joris Bonson himself. Our savior, our friend. Thank you for playing with with my mod, Mr. Streamer. You're welcome. 5,500 steel, and I have absolutely no idea what it does. Um, well, obviously, we're going to put one. I don't know if we could put one behind the cockpit, because that would be kind of the, the perfect place for it there. We'll try and put one there. Uh, we'll definitely put one in the base either way. Let's go ahead and put a little Joris in the lab. There we are. Lab Guardian Joris himself. 5,500 steel. Joris, you better be great for this. Do we... Where, where's regular Joris gone? Uh, regular Joris is still kicking around somewhere. So I had to go and sleep out in the concrete. That's all good. They've already delivered that. <laughs> right, you can go and finish that one off. And one, Joris. Joris, what do you do? Oh, he's a, he's a shield. He's our, our savior. Ah, it makes a lot of sense. Intercepts ground and aerial projectiles. Little Joris is a shield. Right, it makes a lot of sense. So it's kind of like a mech shield, but rolled into one tasty polar bear shell. Big fan of that one. I like that a lot. Okay, fantastic. Well, there we are. A little Joris to help keep our base defended from, um, you know, drop pods, mechanoids, that type of thing. We could put strategic Jorises around the entire base, which is not something I thought I'd say today. So, let's take a look at our big old ship and see what we can do with it. Um, still like the idea of having a Joris in the center. I obviously won't do anything in space. Uh, it actually might affect the vents. I doubt it because, of course, it's not a, a spaceship shield or anything like that. It would just be fun to have him on as a little ship mascot. Uh, right, so, nanotech starburst cannons. You've got to assume are the upgraded versions of the regular starburst cannons, right? They take up a, a, a less of a footprint. Um, damage extreme. That one is damage extreme as well. Range is identical. Heat is more on the nanotech ones. Uh, energy 8,000 PP versus that one, which is 8,000 PP. And, uh, even though I'm a bit of an expert in PP, I can only assume that it is this one that, that, that is a superior choice here. So we will put down quite a few of those. The fact that it's such a small footprint too means we can fill in kind of dead gaps, like here, for example, um, you know, wh where it's just kind of cordoning off different sections. So I, I kind of wanted to section off different bits just so that we could get a bit more finer heat control, even though all of these are most likely just going to be heat sinks anyway. By having separate rooms, we're not relying on it being kind of this big homeostatic thing. We can have separate little areas. That way, if one bit of the ship gets shot, it's not going to affect the whole fucking thing. Um, okay, cool. Right. So where the, how the hell do we start this then? We've got the Ultratech heat cores. Now, the only thing I'm concerned about the Ultratech heat cores is they are 1,000 Arco Matter apiece. So they are staggering. Like, absolutely insanely expensive. But I'm assuming we might be able to just fit in, like, one a room. Um, rather than one in every single section. I think that's probably how we'll start things here. So go ahead and drop one in in each area. I'll try and keep it all nice and equidistant for you there. So it doesn't drive um, you mad. And by you, I mean me. Sorry for using you as an excuse. All right, all nicely measured out. There we go. So they are in fairly equal areas now. I know it doesn't look like it, but they are, trust me. Um, actually, no, that doesn't look like it at all. How the hell have I done this so wrong? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Seven and seven. Okay. And then you are nine and nine. I mean, the center of the ship's off? Hang on. What the hell have I done wrong here? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you've got 38 blocks across there. Fine. Yep, that, that makes sense. And that should be 38 blocks across there. And then it's 18 up to that point. It's 18 down to that point. What the hell have I done wrong? Oh, God. 
Oh, don't make me think about this. It's hurting my brain already. Uh, but it, it lines up, brother. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. This is this is not essential. No, 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 not not important. The more I think about it, the more it's gonna make my brain hurt. We don't need to we don't need to concern ourselves with this, these things. Huh? Better. Okay. It's. I know I said I wasn't gonna concern myself with it, but I fixed it. So don't don't panic. We're all good now. Okay. So we have got the ultra, ultra tech heat cores down. Um, I'm hoping just maybe one or two architect sub zero coolers might be able to cancel those out. I have really no idea. We're gonna be testing it. Um. So what I've done is I've also put down ship storage here, which will keep fuel pods and ice cubes, whatever they're called, in. Um. We may want to fill this room with the other Arcotech thing that we had access to the... I was going to say that the, the ice growers, but of course that's not right. We've, we've only got those in... Oh, what's this? Hello. Oh, we can just put down soil. Oh, hello. Um, that might be better than using hydroponics. I wonder. Uh, if you screw your space crops quickly. I'm going to trust you on this one, and we're going to throw down a bunch of uh, uh, soil over here, at least just to test it. Um... Just so we can grow our ice crystals in a, in, in a space environment. That way we don't need to keep shipping stuff up. We will still put down a shuttle bay probably in this room. Um, but we're not going to be doing much with it. We'll probably put a salvage bay over on this side as well. And then we keep the four quadrants for specifically cooling. Um, I'm sure we'll be more than fine with that. Let's go ahead and just cordon that bit off. And let's go ahead and do the same here as well. There we are. Arco matter pods. We want Arco matter. And then we want the ice crystals, whatever they're called. Uh, ice... Uh, God, I can't remember. Gold now. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Where are we growing them? Some, somewhere in here. There they are. What are they called again? Inactive zero crystals. There you go. Close enough. I think I think ice works just as well. Right, let's trick some of those in there too. I, I've kept it the same priority as our other... Uh, as our other storage system. So that if anything is produced on here, they can just dump it straight in there. Um, but they won't obviously haul things back and forth between the two. So we've got those and then the inactive zero crystals there too. So this is a similar we're going to use to make the crystal pods, the arco pods. Um, just about anything else we'll really need. But I can't think of what else we'll really need. Um, food, I guess we could have it produce food. Can we have it produce food? If I get it to kind of copy the gourmet meal... Or, or even just simple meals while we're in space, to be honest with you. Or a tasty algae stew. Oh. What do you think the fertility rate is? I'm going to take a guess at... Oh, 500%? 1,000%. Hey, close enough. Uh, <laughs> so let's put down a growing zone here then. I see we need sun lamps as well. Um, so if we put that down... To be honest, this is probably faster than hydroponics then. We could probably... I mean, it is faster than hydroponics. There's no debate about that. Um... Let's put down some inactive zero crystals. Do we have any sort of like wall sun lamps, perhaps? Um, wall lamps, wall lights, light columns, space cell lamps. We do have sun columns in the somewhere temperature. Yeah, there it is. Sun column. Um, put one of those down. That's fine. But unfortunately, another one here, but I guess it's not really a big deal, is it? Oh! Dr. Don tried to attract Ice Wolf by implying good things about his own punctuality. Ice Wolf became aroused and agreed to become Dr. Don's lover. Ice Wolf, married to Grasshopper, whoever that is, has begun an affair with Dr. Don. That is a, a scandal in the colony. Um, I can only assume that that's like Ice Wolf's uh, wife slash husband from, their, from the place that we kidnapped them from. Um, neutral. Alliance of Ochogora. Uh, his wife's a creepy breather. So now Dr. Don swooped in. Good news is we've got the, the heat cores almost finished. We've got one more there to deliver to, which they haven't started yet. The problem is we're completely out of Arco matter now, so we've got to wait for our damn machines to start <laughs> whirring up again. How long is it going to... I mean, if it's, it's, it's a thousand, we're making a lot 25 times whatever this... Oh, man. Okay, give me, give me, give me a few minutes. Give me a, give me a few minutes. We should be good. Well... It's been two hours since you last heard from me. Uh, obviously not for you guys. It's been quite literally seconds. But for me, it's been two hours. Uh, things have not gone well. So, uh, what's happened? Well, basically, the game ran to uh, into the ground until things quite literally stopped moving. They got slower and slower and slower until it just quite literally ceased to do anything. Um... So what I've done is I've removed the Arcaferium because that was causing a lot of slowdown. Similar, I've talked about this in previous series actually. Similar to the issue we had with vampires in the vampire series, that when things are moving too fast, it causes some detrimental effects to the game processing. Uh, same same situation here. Things are running better, 
but things are still a slideshow. I've got runtime GC. I've cleaned the save game. I've I've, I've rebooted a couple of times during this uh, session just to try and clear up memory as much as possible. Um, things are things are not going well for the for this poor world. We, I think we have quite literally pushed it to its uh, absolute limit there. What I've also done is disabled all the drills. The sideways drills are still incredibly cursed, but I've disabled all of those because we're not using the Arc Theorem. That did help a brief amount, too. Um, things are very slow. Things are very, very slow. Uh, they, they've kind of tidied up actually a little bit, as, as you've just seen. They've actually got a little bit better right now. Um, but whenever we queue anything up to be built and things like that, it goes butt wild. Like, it loses its mind. I Disabling things like pick up and haul, um, share the load, etc., just to see if that will help cure things slightly. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not going well. This is going to be quite a slog, I think. So progress might be a little slower than it normally is with these things. So after an hour of kind of fucking around, basically, with the mod list and trying to work out what exactly the problems are, kind of stripped out some lights here. I've taken away the two drill rooms. Now we're not using the arc room because, of course, that was uh, that was slowing things up quite a lot as well. A whole combination of things I, I've basically tried to change, and I think I've found, you know, a, a decent work in speed here. Um, so I've removed all the all the kind of lights, the wall lights, those can hit the, uh, basically all emitters I've tried to remove here. Um, so kind of floor lamps and shit too, like in here, for example. I removed the labels on floors mod, because that was, like, hitting the game quite hard. Not really a surprise, given that we've got so many rooms right now. Um... Deep storage, decided to remove deep storage. That was actually doing quite a lot for game performance too. I'm just using Dub's performance analyzer. Won't get into the kind of minutiae of it because it's a bit boring. Um, but basically, if you turn on advanced mode, you go through the various different steps yourself and kind of see exactly what is slowing the game down at what point. Um, long story short, turns out there are a couple of candidates, like I said, labels on floors, um, simple storage, deep storage, something like that. Uh, some other weird stuff. Anyway, we seem to be working to a, a kind of decent speed now. So as a result, I've been able to build up a load of Arco matter and actually build up a bunch of capital heat cores. Currently, our heat capacity is uh, 580,000 heat units, which is less than the first Joris Bonson ship. But the first Joris Bonson, the first SS Joris Bonson, didn't get anywhere near that heat capacity. It just overheated from lack of heat transfer, lack of heat management. Um... So I'm kind of hoping that's where these sub-zero coolers will come into play. I put a couple down in there as well. But I've been stockpiling the Arco Matter so we could put down some more of these as well. So we've got something like 13,000 Arco Matter, if I remember right. Let me just quickly, quickly take a look here. If I can clip the friggin' button. Right, how are we looking on that? Yeah, 13,840. So I think we'll put down, I don't know, we could put down like nine in each room of these. Or eight, I guess, in each room of these. And sort of see how that holds up. Turn that one into output ground storage and go Arco Matter for it, sod it. Just to help speed things up as much as possible. Now what I've done is I've moved some of the stuff around too. Um, so, ah, oh, it's a shame I didn't move that one block over there, my bad. Um, so what we've got here is we've got the plasma drill, very basic plasma drill, just drilling steel and components. Steel we need to be able to make the canisters, components we need for repairing crap that breaks down. Be that shield generators, lanterns, heaters, whatever. You know, it's just kind of a general repair thing. Put down a very basic bedroom on the ship too. I say bedroom, it's a barracks. You know, we're made all made of Arco Matter because again, we've got kind of an abundance for it right now. The Arco Matter billiards table. Could it be a step above the Jade billiards table? I bloody hope so, seeing as it's frigging expensive. How much is that worth out of pure curiosity? 72,000. Uh, in terms of market value, only normal quality too, unfortunately. Before panic and chaos kicks in, uh, I have actually put the drill, uh, the, the drill, the actual laser into the heat grid this time. So no more repeats of last time where we got absolutely wrecked because I uh, fucked it up. I did fuck up the, I mean, I wasn't very neat with the, with obviously the placement of the cables there. I don't really care to be honest with you. I like, I've, I've said it before, I like the rustic ship. I like the cables being everywhere. I like the heat cables being everywhere. It makes you feel a bit more spaceshipy rather than just like nicely polished room. What's the heat capacity on each one of these? Then I wonder. What are we looking at right now? Um, 480,000 heat units. Oh, because those ones technically aren't obviously plumbed in yet. Um, let's go ahead and plumb those in quickly, and then we can just divide by two whatever the additional heat is. Oh, never mind. They've royally fucked that up now, haven't they? 480,000 up to 860,000. Wow. So these things are. What's that, like 60,000 heat units? Be Don't check the mass. Look, okay, it's midnight. I've been recording this episode since 8pm. Uh, and I woke up at 6 o'clock. 
and other other such excuses to explain why I can't do basic mathematics. So after another pretty pretty significant time investment here, we've got a bunch of Ultra Tech heat cores down. Uh, 32 of those. We've got 30 Capital heat cores there, and then we've also got the Sub Zero coolers down. 26 of those. I actually have to turn them off because the ship got so cold it was killing our people. They were getting hypothermia just from being in the same room. Um, I did accidentally turn those off. That's why Yolanda is hurt because she got burnt by the, uh, got burnt by the, the heat that these things were producing. Anyway, we can now run that on overdrive. It uh, just occurred to me that we don't have any capacitors or anything, but we can finally start designing the weapons that we want for the ship. I have no idea how this thing is going to perform. We need to get up into space. We need to test it. We need to make sure the systems are working fine as well. Um, if they don't, we're fucked. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> to put it bluntly, because we have no way to, unlike unlike the other ship, unlike the old SS Joris, um, which was basically a space station, this is more of a of of a of a ship. Um, well, if you can call it that, so it's not able to produce the, any resources we need, unlike the old one that obviously had the drills and the the assemblers and everything. We don't have that luxury this time around. So if it doesn't work, we're in a little bit of trouble there. We'll have to land it in kind of a hurry. Um, Ideally, I'd like to test it against a trader or something like that. See how effective everything is. Kind of see the heat levels and whatnot. Um, which by the drill, what are we up to? 2.54 million uh, heat units there. But again, I don't know how much these new weapons are going to take up. So let's put down... Nanotech, as far as I can tell, by the way, is, is functionally identical to the um, regular variant. So like Nanotech Railgun versus Machine Railgun. The only difference is it takes up a one square. Um, it's, it's a one by one area rather than a... Um, so, for example, this thing is obviously 2x2. Two two. Uh, I believe the other machine railgun turret is as well, right? So, what do we want to do with our... I guess we could do, like, one of those, one of those, one of those, and one of those. What the hell is a nanotech neutron turret? Ooh, okay. Solve the machine gun turrets, because I don't think they were particularly good. Um, we can make that and then just clone it and kind of see how effective something like that is. I don't know whether it's even worth going back to the other weapons. The laser turrets, the plasma turrets, the railgun turrets. I don't know if they're super low tech now compared to everything else we've got and everything else we're going to be fighting or... Like, I don't know what to fill the gaps with, if that makes sense. So we'll probably just blueprint out a few of these. God, I need to get rid of some of these blueprints, don't I? Um, probably just blueprint out a few of these and treat them as kind of like a weapon cluster and see how effective that is. Um, let's put some down the sides here. Sure, why not? Do those have a range? I mean, I know what they've got a range. They're a turret, but why do they have a range while we're on the planet? They're not like turrets that you stick in your killbox type of turrets, are they? Uh, otherwise, that's going to be embarrassing when I pick on a freighter and all we've got is this giant laser cannon to deal with them. <laughs> well, the Starburst cannon is apparently quite good, so I might I might pepper a few of those out there. I think that's what that first Arcotech drone that we fought that, that destroyed um, the original SS Joris. I think that is what that was using. So we'll maybe be able to put quite a few of these around. Got to make sure, of course, I get... Uh, Gonna make sure I don't forget to actually put down the, the thermal power on that. That's probably expensive while they're also hideously expensive by comparison to all the other turrets too. Anyway, like I was about to talk about before I was rudely interrupted, I think that these are probably the larger cannons that we're expected to use, right? Um, so that one's the MP. Uh, turrets are deadly. Mount ship into nothing. Well, that sounds pretty good. Hyper condensed activated. Archimedes so volatile would annihilate anything on contact. And a Dagon. Um, okay, so maybe one's a laser, one's a plasma gun, and one's a rail gun. I would assume. Um... Maybe we should build, like, kind of a few more of these turrets and take it up into space and kind of test it out on stuff. Uh, just try and get the right... Uh, give it, give our people a chance to get some more research done while we take this ship up into space with people who don't do the research and just get into some combat, fight some traders, fight whatever we can. Um, as I, I'm thinking if we strap some more engines to the friggin' thing as well, just so that we can escape as and when it all goes a bit pear-shaped. Probably not a bad idea. Um, that doesn't cross over. That doesn't count as actually part of the engine. I think it's just kind of decor. So if we throw a couple more engines on as well, more than happy to give that a go. Um, we should be able to escape pretty decently with that. That way, if we need to land or retreat or whatever, we're good, right? A lot of inactive zero crystals for those. Damn, how many of those have we got? I assume we've, we've picked up quite a few there. Um, a zero. Oh. <laughs> huh. Yeah, to be fair, we do have a zero crystal farm, like a dedicated zero crystal farm. So it's not such a big deal. Traders? Oh, hello. That was unexpected. We should really do something about the giant smoke cloud too, shouldn't we? We should really we should really head over there and fucking deal with that. Um I completely forgot about it to be honest with you. Can we craft like an Arcotech gun and just go over there and blast them? Give me a Give me a beam cannon, I guess. 
Uh, what else we got here? Ripper? Uh, plasma Eagle Flamer Blaster. What does a Ripper do? Is that like a... Fire rate, 450 RPM. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for, really. I could take Lancer. It's also for, uh, 450 RPM versus the Beam Cannon, which is 360. Nice. Okay, good. Um, lo much lower move speed with that, though. Just to bear in mind. It's got, obviously, a much bigger heavy weapon. Um, what about, like, armor penetration and shit on it? 100%. Fair enough. Three shot burst count. I want to make a couple of these. I, I want to send Hocus and, Hocus and Mondas. Uh, over to that mechano thing and just go and deal with it. Just go and just go and see how this thing works. It's a thousand arco matter per gun. What else do you want from me there? Um, there's, there's some other ingredients I can't quite see. Oh, we've got all of that, right? Arco matter algae. We've been growing a shitload of that. I think we've got enough anyway. Um, let's go. Ar uh, algae probably going in here. Oh wow. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so Siala then. If you could do me a favor and craft me the big gun. It's that we can't craft it because we need material. What fucking material do you think we need that we don't have? Can I craft Arco Matter Beam Cannon? Need material. Uh. Right, we've got enough algae. Got enough Arco Matter. Maybe someone's reserved the Arco Matter to the extent that now we've, we've fallen below the amount we need for the bill. That probably makes the most sense, right? I think, that's, I think that's more than likely it. There is somebody who I didn't feed Arcafurium to, actually. Somebody very close and near and dear to our hearts who I completely forgot about. My friends is Joris Bonson, the polar bear, who I'm assuming we can administer Arcafurium to. Uh, so we're going to just see what happens when you give a polar bear uh, a tasty powdered Arco matter. Uh, Dr. Don. You have no medical license, so you've got nothing to lose here, my friend. Oh, good lord. Oh, good lord. What are we doing? Go on, then. Perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> 970 percent move speed. Poor, I mean, in the Robo Daddy series, poor, poor Voitech got, got fed cigarillos. In this series... Joris gets Arcafirium. Like, my god, you've got 950% move speed, and that's... That's really all you can manage, brother. Well, I suppose when the addiction kicks in, we'll see him fly across the map. I'm gonna do some maths here. Hang on. How fast can a polar bear run? Uh, it's 40 kilometers per hour. So 40 kilometers... Uh, it was 40 times 170%. 388. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Joris Bonson can, if he feels like it, if the mood takes him, run at 388 miles per hour. Kilometers per hour, sorry. Um, that's actually incredible and maybe the best thing we've ever done. Yeah, I would be fucking taming him too. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. We have to go for attack now, don't we? Apparently it's also bonded to Anastara, which is incredible. Uh, we have to go for attack. And then if we get Raiders turning up, we just sick Boris Johnson, Joris Bonson on them. <clears throat> and we watch as he viciously rips them apart at 388 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Santa bitch. You can't hide in the North Pole anymore. We got the ultimate Santa hunting weapon. It's a 400 kilometer an hour polar bear, brother. It's okay, Rudolph. Joris Bonson's not real. He can't hurt you. Just fly away. Just fly away. Oh, guess what? Joris can fly now. <laughs> <laughs> with with 120% manipulation and 970% moving, you gotta you gotta imagine this guy could jump pretty goddamn high. You gotta imagine he could jump pretty high, and the Arcafurian would just cure any 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 you know broken pelvises, for example. That would cut. I assume bears have pelvises. I can't say I've ever really checked. I don't know much about bear morphology, but I assume they have pelvises. Shatters just immediately regenerates. Basically, he can fly. Uh, and he can fly. Probably. Oh, okay, let me Google this. Hang on. Sorry. Pause the game a second. Uh. How high, how high can polar bears jump? Oh my god, polar bears can run 25 miles an hour and jump higher than six feet. <laughs> what was his movement again? 970 or something like that? Hang on. Uh, it's 58.2. So we can run at 400 kilometers an hour and jump 40, 40 foot into the air. No, it wasn't 40 foot, sorry, was it? It was like 60 foot. Um, yeah, because it's six times 170 percent, you fool. Wow, that's um, it's quite large. That's a, that's a frightening polar bear. Okay, so the retreat engines, that's what they're, well, let's not call them that. The tactical retreat engines are officially in, uh, are, are in place. 
Uh, then we've got, of course, we need some more regular rocket engines too here to actually move the bloody thing. We've got some ship weapons. We're waiting on a few more of the starburst cannons. Obviously, a lot of time and effort there just went into building the engine. So I think they'll should be able to get these whacked out in no time. Might need more nano kits. That's really the only... That's really the only thing that could potentially cost us any stuff. And we've got 75 of them. Fair enough. I, we still can't make the still can't make the gun then, huh? Oh, there we are. I'll come out to fuel pods. No, no, no. I don't think you understand. I want the fucking beam cannon. I don't know what we're missing. Now it's Arco Matter. Reasonable. Okay, fair enough. Forget about that for the time, mate. We're going to have time to build the beam cannon when the ship is in orbit. We can be fighting the mechanoids with the beam cannons and simultaneously killing traders. Oh, before I forget more of these too. Yeah. Um, wherever they'll fit. So we'll put kind of... Oh, maybe not there because it's going to be hideous. Um, oh, okay, fuck it. Why not? Again, like I said, wherever wherever they'll fit. Wherever they'll fit that also looks decent. Um, so we'll go one one there. One there. We could put just kind of two in each quadrant, right? It lines up, I think. Uh, kind of hard to tell. I'm going to say yes. Yes, it does. Fine. And they'll put one there and then one there. Perfect. Something I should probably address as well. Somebody asked me why I never put down the kind of uh, these things. The, the kind of hull corners to tidy up the ship. Uh, the simple reason is, I don't know if you can hear that, they don't rotate. Um, or at least I thought they didn't rotate. Let's take, for example, I don't know, something that does bloody rotate. Joris statue? Yeah, so Joris statue rotates. A cursed upside down Joris. Um, that, that rotates fine, but these don't. Unless I press the buttons, which is a bit bizarre. So I just never really bothered doing it because it was always... Uh, um, because I didn't even know I could do this, to be honest with you. But now I know that. Um, can I really be bothered for, for aesthetic reasons? I guess it's not even aesthetics reasons. It does provide a little bit more hull covering, doesn't it? Well, that, that might be a, a kind of an overnight project. Round off the edges of our ship. Because I'm not sure I can be bothered to do that. We've got enough cam fuel, right? Oh, yeah, we've got bloody loads of cam fuel. So make sure this is all nicely fueled up then. And then we'll, we'll head off, get into some combat. Long story short. Give it a test flight. Got into orbit. Everything caught fire. Uh, so I'm putting down more coolers. It's these bloody capital heat cores. They are like seriously, seriously prone to overheating. Uh, the vents are also uh, not very good. Um, the, the whole vent system with the with the ring in the center didn't really go as planned. Um, so I need I need methods of dealing with the friggin' output from these capital heat cores. Sure, they're cheaper than the other ones, but my god, do they bleed heat fast. Actually, if the room's ambient temperature with the coolers is minus 270 whatever, and the vacuum of space is minus 100, it would be better to close the vents, right? If the ambient temperature of the of the room without heat is, uh, so say that the heat cores aren't charged or anything like that, is minus 200, it would be better to not have the vents at all. Because at that point, you, you're just losing cold to the outside. Or more specifically, the heat is rushing in from the vacuum of space and warming up the ship. Hmm. Yeah, in hindsight, that makes a lot more sense, huh? Well, never mind. <laughs> My donut might not work on account of the ship being... Uh, almost absolute zero anyway. Oh, yeah, it's minus 273. Quantum mechanics get fucked. The ship moves slightly forward and everything just merges together. Brilliant. Um, should we... Is it much point turning those off now? Let's only turn them off while we're working on them. We don't need to worry about that anymore. Let's get everything turned on. We've got to be very careful that they don't hang around in these rooms for too long because uh, shit gets cold. Shit gets very cold. Oh, my God. Shit gets hideously cold. That one is like minus two... Se that, that one is essentially absolute zero. Minus 273 just constantly. That's phenomenal. What about this one? Uh, yep. Pretty much bang on as well. Uh, I love the fact that despite the fact the rest of the ship is absolute zero, we've got 10 heaters and that's enough to keep these rooms warm. The, the floors disappeared. When we landed the ship, all the floors disappeared again. Um, so we are going to have to put those back down. But it's hideously expensive and I can't be bothered. Right, let's get into space. Actually test this freaking thing out. Right, go, go, go. Get out of here. Right, so who was I sending up again? Just to recap here. It's the people who can't research or aren't very good at researching. Um, so we've got Senpai, Anastrava, uh, and Anastava, Griff, and Icewall. Griff, Anastara, Senpai, Icewall. Griff, uh, Anastara, Anastara, Senpai, Icewall. Senpai, Senpai, where are you? There you are. Okay. You guys get on the ship. You're in charge. Don't fuck this up. This is our first Arco ship. This is this is like a monumental occasion here. Blast it off. Let's see if this time it catches fire. If it does catch fire this time, I have I have no solutions. Absolutely no solutions here. Right, go. Boom. Into space with you. 
Luckily, it doesn't take too long to actually get into orbit now that it's not taking up the entire freaking screen. Um, although, apparently, a roof collapsed because it was too far away from support, which is never a good sign. Okay, there we are. No, 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 no. You guys need to actually not leave the, the kind of residential areas. I need to lock all these doors and then kind of unforbid. The... So, you're allowed to go in there. You're allowed to go onto the bridge. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> ah, everywhere else, too cold. Far too cold. Okay, well, not everything caught fire this time, so I'm a big fan of that one. I'll put down some regular capacitors, because we had a load of spare space, and the uh, hypercapacitors are hideously expensive. Um, it looks as if it's going the color of warm, but it's not actually warm. Okay, nothing to worry about, then. I think we've actually done it. Yeah, the ship is basically just, obviously, slightly above absolute zero there. That is that's incredible. All right, and you guys get to wander around in this sad bedroom. I feel like someone's gone missing. Who have we lost? Oh, you're, you're manning at the, the ship bridge. Fine, that's reasonable. Um, and now we just kind of wait until either we're attacked or a trade ship turns up so I can blast them away. They're having a party. They're having a, they're having a space party. First ever Arco spaceship party. Fortunately, Jarvis was not invited. The bloody crack fiend. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Cucumber fiend. Um, it's not that weird thing where it's put blocks under the engines again. Maybe that's what happened to our blocks over here. Like some weird floor generation going on. I'm excited to see how this first fight goes, because if things do start catching fire, we've got these things that apparently put out fires too. Um, we've got good coverage on this ship. It's looking quite powerful. Oh, it doesn't line up though. It's not quite right there. Well, never mind. Well, our people started getting frostbite because it is fairly cold on the ship, but luckily we've got a boatload of, well, I mean, because we've got the plasma draw, we can make as much steel and components as we need there. So I put down a bunch of radiators in a kind of panic. Ah. Uh, to keep things nice and warm. Now, what we've had in the meantime is a, an export company, an exotic goods trader, turn up here. I'm really hoping it's just a regular save our ship, exotic goods trader, so we can see what this what what this ship is capable of, what the heat output is in a completely safe environment. Let's take a look. Oh, you poor fool. Okay, I want to see this thing be pulled apart. So here's what we're gonna do: set force target. Um, how far away are they? They're actually quite far, right? Um. Let's get as close as we can to it and test a weapon at a time. How fast can we accelerate now? Pretty bloody fast. Fucking hell, look at that. This thing is like a... This thing's like a jet compared to Joris, um, which was, uh, I guess, uh, like, a, like, a, like an ice cream van by comparison. Okay, within range of everything, I think. Well, let's test out the Spinal Barrel Dominator for a start. So I'm just going to go ahead and blast this side of your ship. Oh, that's fucking incredible. Big, big old, big old thing. <laughs> ah, what? Um, I I'll be honest, I expected it to be a bit more powerful than that. I expected it to do a lot more damage, but that's okay. Um, interesting, right? So, so not that super, super powerful, but very good at taking out shields by the looks of it. So let's test out, what have we got here? The harasser turrets. Let's test those out next. So let's go and aim at this side of the ship. Oh, there we are. L little kind of pew pew. So those are the ones that break shields, as far as I recall. Um, let's take a look at them very briefly. He is uh, zero, by the way. Uh, consistently zero. Um, low damage that requires a lot of power. Oh, fast shooting attack, kinetic burster. Oh, really? Um, barely does any damage at all, actually. Oh, it's not terrible. Um, but bear in mind, this is against a regular save our ship trade vessel. Not that, not that powerful. Okay. Um, so go ahead and stop forced attack from those. Let's test out the, what have we got here? Depleted starts obviously against shields, so this one's a bit of a waste of time, but we might as well give it a go. Huh? Oh, wow, those are interesting. Look at those fly. He is, uh, zero, by the way. <laughs> we are essentially invincible, I feel, at this point. Uh, and those, I guess, don't work because they haven't got any shields. Fair enough. What else we got then? The neuron turrets. I think we tested those out. Let's go ahead and give some shots out from those. Oh man, those are slow projectiles, aren't they? Those are like slower than torpedoes. Crazy. I can fire again in another 16 seconds. Man, those are really fucking slow. My god. Look at that. Consistent though. We can just keep firing volley after volley after volley. Okay, fair enough. There we are. Coming in now. There are only small thick. They look cool. Um, but you got to remember they're only kind of little, though. Yeah, wow. Okay, weird. So let's do let's do the whole ship's complement now. I just wanted to test what the weapons did. I didn't really expect them to, um, you know, wipe things out the way our good old laser did. 
Rest in peace. Right, let's do it then. All weapons. Set force target. We still haven't seen the starburst cannons, but I assume they're going to be quite strong. Ah, oh, there we go. Pew, 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 pew. Got a nice little variety of weapons there. Let's take a look. I mean, it looks cool. It's visually very impressive. And that's all that matters. Oh, God, here comes the plasma gun. I forgot about that. What I've built is the world's greatest firework display. And I mean, it looks really nice. I mean, it is melting their ship, like, kind of comically fast as well. Um, and also, take a look at our heat bar. Our heat is zero. And assuming these things do any damage, it means that we're guaranteed victory. <laughs> I don't think our shields are going to take any of damage from this whatsoever. Wow, it looks really, really cool. I'm quite impressed by that. You know, it's not the it's not the one hit punch ship that we had previously, but it is infinitely sustainable, quite literally here. Um, the energy is actually only ever going up. Yeah, wow. Okay, I'm quite impressed. And again, it looks really, really cool. Let's go ahead and stick it on speed four, see how the game handles it. Oh, this is this is nice. I can deal with this. Actual visual ship battles that I don't have to speed up 5,000% in post-production. Yeah, I can I can fuck with that. This is cool. Now, imagine we got a friend of mine that we've built a very small amount of our actual ship surface area with these two. We could build the entire bloody ship with these if we really, really wanted to. Like, we could go ham on it. We're going to cut that ship in half at this rate. Ah, let's, uh, let's focus fire and see if we actually can cut that ship in half. I think that'd be kind of funny. Um, but for a first test here, just for a kind of a, a casual, um, a casual bit of space piracy, I thought that was quite fun. Um, I think we did quite a good job there. We just had to kind of rattle off some more shots. Oh, the shot's coming in four different angles now. Oh, your poor ship. My god. And I think the bridge, where's the bridge? Like, gotta be in there or something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and finish him off. At this point, we're just we're just kind of toying with. I mean, the whole thing was just toying with them, huh? Um, but I I actually kind of want to take the ship back down to the planet and just cover the ship, the entire deck, in all these various guns. But anyway, what we've got here is a tiny little sampling. Like we've got entire rooms we could fill out in kind of a crosshatch pattern. So if we take this and we just clone it over and over and over and over, and we just do it until, I mean, it's going to be like this, but cranked up to a hundred. I mean, maybe more than that, bearing in mind the actual size of the, uh, the surface area we've got access to. You'll buy a little trade ship. Rest in peace, bridge. Any second now. God damn. Poor fucking Harvey. Shitting himself. There we go. Excellent work. Well done, people. Mighty salvage did we get from that? A bunch of prisoners. Um... Shit, I mean, I don't really want any of this, to be honest with you. Uh, I think I think we're a bit past this level now, aren't we? Architect ship, sure. We'll obviously, we'll obviously take that. Um, take the cargo shuttle. That's quite funny. Um, we've got psychic animal pulses. To be fair, we can't actually craft those. Gourmet meals and gourmet desserts actually genuinely worth taking here. Give me all this shit. You can keep the rest. Oh, excuse me. Give me... I think swap the, swap the order of those buttons or am I going mad? Oh, another ship battle immediately. World end of fleet. Hello. That doesn't sound very friendly at all. World End of Fleet? That doesn't sound fun. They've got guns. We don't have guns. That's not fair. We don't have we don't have real guns. That was a test. We're gonna we're gonna go full retreat if you don't mind. We're going we're going full retreat. Absolutely one hundred percent. You are never gonna be able to catch us. Ooh. A heat is zero. A heat is zero. They can't catch us, they can't destroy us. We're just gonna get the fuck out of here. Escape Oh my engines. Escape no 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 no. Escape combat. There we are. Right, let's put the ship down, and let's put some actual guns on this thing. We know our heat is in a phenomenal place, and that was the, the only thing I was concerned about with this build. Uh, land? Please land. Oh, God, please land. Don't do this to me. Right, let's drop, a, drop it right there, and boom. There we go. Okay, we're good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> And now the game is broken. <laughs> you know what? I think that's probably a good place to leave it there for today, isn't it? Thank you all for watching. We are very close to our end goal of having a working, super powerful, super cool spaceship. Uh, we can obviously test out various different designs and shit, but uh, I, I just want to get like a decently powerful thing um, with, 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 with the guns. Maybe try and finish the research as our real final end of series goal. That'd be, that'd be quite nice. Um, I think we're getting there. 
I think we've, I think we've done a pretty good job today. I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite liking our ship. I like the fact that I, I think it's almost invincible. It's, it, it's certainly got no power behind it. It's all completely opposite of the glass cannon we built last time, where now we've got just the immovable object. Unfortunately, it doesn't do much moving of its own. Unless you're an innocent trade ship that's severely underpowered. Thank you in the meantime, of course, to our executive producers for making the series possible in the first place. A big thank you goes out to Jess, Udrick Haddon, Skaz, Neozilla, Manskud, Hoopaloop, Jobo Daddy, Out of All Context, Daedric Daikatana, Voodoo Mumbo, Salentali, Tom B, Siala, Bogbin and Potarted for their support at the executive producer tiers on coffee. Big thanks to you all. Thank you for, for kind of sticking with the channel again over the past week while I've been sorting things out IRL and also uh, the final month of, of, of coffee before we jump platforms again. It's been probably the final time we ever have to do that because now I can actually get paid in my own currency rather than American dollars, whatever the hell those made up things are. Thank you as well. <laughs> Thank you as well to... Marcus Abzan, Extra Small, Shlomo, Bizarro Jesus, Rovery, But I'm Homeless, Fativen, Riley M, Bordoom, Jumpin' Jack, Paracosm, Master 2000, Saint Raccoon, Magister Militant, Noobmeister, Gordy Number One, and Rotten Flash for their support as well. Thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you hopefully or tomorrow, unless I take another fucking 12 hours to record an episode again.